welcome back to the Wolverine Live. I'm John Borton. We're here with Tom Crawford, as always, on Tuesday nights. Glad that you could join us tonight. I uh, want to let you know right now that you're going to have a lot of football talk coming your way and some breaking basketball news. Uh, none of the news seems to be particularly good for Michigan of late, <laughs> other than the uh, incoming uh portal entries but we're going to talk about both sides of it uh tom crawford welcome back to the uh broadcast and as always really glad to have you with us oh uh, it's always great to be on the wolverine live with jb my friend john borden and i'm telling you i was just thinking the other day you know in the old days uh and you're you're you go back for media further than me uh, covering the michigan wolverines once the spring game was over with it kind of went chill basketball's over with kind of chill they checked in. They went over to Fisher Stadium, see how their baseball team was doing. But now college football and college basketball is 24-7, 365 days a year because of the portal, because of NIL. It, you know, it's just it's it's crazy. And this in Michigan is like the poster child of uncertainty. And every day is a new news bag. And I heard our colleagues, at Will, I'm trying to think of who it was. It was Anthony said they had to restart. And Clay had to restart the podcast because something happened right in the middle of it. They just re they recoiled uh, last week. I mean, this is the way it is. We might have to recoil after this. Megan might have to dial us up again if, if something happens in the next uh, 45 minutes, John. Absolutely. And you mentioned Megan, our new producer. Uh, Megan, we appreciate you uh, making all of this work and flipping the switches and doing what's necessary to bring the Wolverine Live to you folks. And you're right, though. It's it's just nonstop. It's um, it is not only the transfer portal. It's not only roster changes, but it's also recruiting. And that is obviously an ongoing process. A little bit easier for Jim Harbaugh these days, I believe, because, I mean, you're sitting on two Big Ten championships and two uh, decisive wins over Ohio State. And we've talked about these things before to Michigan making the playoffs. But now, this is a team, obviously, that wants to take the next step. And is it looks for all the world that it's prepared to. Jim Harbaugh is saying this is the best version of Michigan he's seen since he returned here in 2015. That says a lot to me because, it, I mean, this is a guy, again, remember, that doesn't like to make comparisons. If you make comparisons to somebody else, you diminish somebody else. Well, I don't think he's really diminishing – his previous teams. He's just saying this thing has built to where this, this may be the apex of his time here. And I think that starts behind center with JJ McCarthy. You've got a, a, a young man that a lot of people expect to do a whole lot of big things this year, played his first uh, time, full-time starting last year, won that job and now people expect even more from him. He expects more from himself. My question, just to kick this thing off, we'll start with an easy one, Tom Crawford. Will J.J. McCarthy, will J.J. McCarthy be making a trip to uh, New York this December because he is headed for the, the Heisman finalist announcement? Well, I'm a captain, obvious, and actually, I started. I I started chirping this little thing, John. If you recall, the week after the Fiesta Bowl, I said, you know, it's something told me that in my mind, um, and once again, the silhouette of him looking at the trophy presentation of the Fiesta Bowl champion to the to the opposition, this being TCU, unlike last year, and you know, or like last year, it was with Georgia. This is a ultra competitive young man. And I, he, he I, I don't know. He's got the something, something going on with him. I've always liked this kid. You know, you know we go back to the, the quarterback argument a year ago. You, you knew what I felt about JJ McCarthy, and the fact he put on some more weight and it, what he's done in the weight room. I think the Holman, you know, he's he's just going to be more seasoned. Um, the the fact the other, you know, he's so likable on this team. The whole, the whole, everything, everything on this team right now. I know it's easy. You know, in mid-April, it's you know we're all protected from it. Not mid, no no accountability when he made declarations, right? But this, I I'm, I'll say it again. I've never ever close to been this excited about the aspiration of Michigan football in the following season, fall, 
chances of a natty. I think it's very good chance they're going to be in the national championship game. I think they're going to win the national championship game. And he's going to be in New York to answer your question to win the Heisman Trophy. I, he's at least going to be there. Let's just say this. And I mean, he's, I mean, what is there? Caleb Williams, and there's JJ McCarthy, the top quarterbacks coming up. All these other teams have quarterbacks. I saw Kyle McCord on that Ohio State spring game. He didn't exactly scare me. I, this is the dude right there, number nine. Okay, there you go. And just to remind folks and remind you, Tom Crawford, that there is accountability on the Wolverine Live. I will reiterate <laughs> the fact that I owe Tom Crawford a Pizza Bob milkshake for yes. what JJ McCarthy accomplished. Yes. last year and we're going to yes. get that done so yes. anyway we are going to get that done i might order two of them on interest alone there JB. oh yeah okay. I, i'm i'm uh, i'm good for it i'm good for it but here's i'm not going to say that jj mccarthy's not going to be in new york uh because i think he has an excellent chance to be but let me just do the devil's advocate argument uh that's saying okay this is what might keep him from it my question is will Michigan throw the football enough for J.J. McCarthy to compile the kind of numbers during the regular season to be that guy, one of those five guys that uh, that go to New York. I mean, you're looking at a team, remember, that has brought back the uh, the heart of its offensive line, is going to be very good up front again, has two, I mean, basically two starting tailbacks, and Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards are going to pile up massive rushing numbers again. I mean, certainly one of those two guys in the backfield will, will have their own uh, probably exactly. have their own claim to being one of those finalists. So could that impact Tom Crawford, the uh, – the chances for J.J. McCarthy to uh, to be there, to be the spotlighted guy. Yeah, well, you know, keep in mind, and we all know this, the Heisman Trophy is somewhat of a quarterback's award versus a running back award. No doubt. Been that no way, doubt. you know. And then you got, <laughs> you got, you know, Blake Corman, Donovan Edwards kind of canceling each other out. I mean, not that they're all, they're, you know, not that they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're tight. They're not competing against one another for some, Silly individual award, which I, I'm not big into individual awards. I, you know, I, here I'm proclaiming that he's going to be there, but I, I you know, I, I want Michigan to win a national title. I've never ever been a huge, huge Heisman Trophy fan follower, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of my friends are voters, and I, you know, I kind of just politely listen to their dialogue about. It. I don't, I don't care. Uh, would it be not? I loved it when Charles Woodson won it, and I'd be loving it with if JJ. But other than that, it, it's kind of a, a thing on Saturday night. The week after, you know, the week after the Big Ten championship on a Saturday night, about ten to nine, you see who wins the Heisman Trophy. Sometimes I'm yeah. watching, sometimes not. But um, yeah, I think uh, you know he's. I think the aerial game is gonna to answer your question. I think it's gonna improve vastly. I think with Sharon Moore steering the ship as the OC by himself, I think that's gonna be uh, that, that's a, that's a good that's a good good thing in in my regard. And I know we're gonna talk about Kirk Campbell here. But I think I think the, the dynamics that he is going to bring as a quarterbacks coach is going to be great for JJ. I just like everything. I just like everything. Maybe I'm Mr. <laughs> Over Positive here, but I just like the way things are lining up. Okay, two things about what you just said. Um, I agree on the '97 Heisman Trophy, my favorite Heisman Trophy of all time, for yes. two reasons. Not only did was it the first defensive player in Charles Woodson to to win that, but it still has. Tennessee fans apoplectic to oh, this yeah. very day like because Peyton word. Manning got shut out. And so <laughs> and there's no question about it. And the second thing is, if if we're sitting here talking in April about whether or not the quarterback makes the uh, makes New York for the Heisman Trophy, that's that's pretty good. That's better than, say, what we were talking about in the summer of, say, say 20 what 2021 after that 2020 season it's oh, yeah. uh it, there, there's no question about it michigan has come a long way from uh from that uh, devastating two and four tro covid truncated season so anyway we're, moving on we, we talked you mentioned kirk campbell new quarterbacks coach new offensive coordinator how will that impact in your mind, possibly, potentially, you know, we're projecting now, but the offense and uh, the the 
ability of J.J. McCarthy to be uh, more effective in it. Well, I mean, Kirk Campbell, uh, I follow him a little bit when he was at Penn State. When And during that stretch, I think he won some, over 30 games and, and a couple of New Year's Six Bowl games. And that's more than Michigan's won, um, obviously. And and I, I, you know, I remember they beat Memphis and, and he was an uh, interim quarterback. I think that's when he first started out in that role. But, you know, I, I really don't know the dynamics. This is something we're probably going to learn more as we approach, you know, camp and, and the media access and finding out more from J.J., getting more input from him versus, you know, and, and also from Kirk Campbell and and Shiro more about it. He'll, you know, and, and obviously Jim Harbaugh. So we're going to know more about that. but. Uh, from my understanding, this guy's got a tremendous background, and I, I, you know, this whole quarterback coach thing is, uh, you know, I, it's it, I, you know, you go back when you first started covering the Wolverine, they didn't even have that position, you know, it was the OC kind of worked with a, with a, with a quarterback, and then I remember Michigan's first um, prominent quarterbacks coach, and, and we lost him a, a year ago, Stan Parrish, I think. But then we'd lose him a year ago that he passed away, Yes, if yes. I'm not mistaken. And so he was a quarterback coach uh, in the 90s, um, Brian Greasy, Tom Brady, and, uh, and and Drew Henson. And I just remember uh, how much impact he had. Uh, I mean, he literally uh, was, was such a vital – and that all of a sudden, since that, in my mind, that's that's a crucial, crucial – position on a coaching staff there's a special relationship between the quarterback and and the quarterback coach and it's almost like a mental therapist as well I know I know some schools the quarterback coach is the only one who talks to the quarterback uh on the headset when he comes over from the sidelines nobody else it's a one-on-one relationship and I'm not right. sure how that's going to work out at Michigan but it, it's a vital position and from what I understand Kirk Campbell's going to be outstanding yeah, and I know that uh, J.J. McCarthy is excited about working directly with him. I mean, he did so before, but this time Kirk Campbell moves up. He's the guy as far as the uh, the quarterback's coordinator. And uh, you know that according to J.J., this is a guy that, that brings a great deal of energy and enthusiasm and hands-on, let's go, let's deal with problems right here, right now on the field and uh, not wait around to the film room to, uh, to take a yeah. look and analyze things. Let's go, right? I mean, just, just brings a lot of immediacy to that position. So I know J.J. McCarthy's excited, and I would say that beyond that with Sharon Moore uh, as the sole offensive coordinator now, uh, you – you look at a situation where, okay, does the offense change dramatically because of that? I'm a wait and see guy on that. Why? Yeah, because yeah. ultimately the offense that Michigan runs is going to be Jim Harbaugh's offense. <laughs> I think he you got to mention that, huh? <laughs> well, I just, you know, and that's not a bad thing. They no, no, I get it. I get it. They, they no. haven't exactly been slouches these last couple of years. No, but, no, but, I'm, but I'm always interested on that point, though, if I could could incorporate this question to you. I mean, I'm, I'm, we've never had that clearly defined. Um, we never had it clearly defined when you had the co-coordinators. But, I mean, uh, it's never been defined, you know, does Jim Harbaugh have, you know, veto power? I don't think he's ever answered that question. And you always wonder if that veto power, does that damage the dynamics and the credibility of the of the offensive coordinator making his plays? You know, I mean, I, I know Nick Saban, he yields to the OC, and uh, and then he'll scream at him when it doesn't work on the sidelines, <laughs> no less. But, um, I, you know, you're right. Um, it's, it's, it's probably Harbaugh is a, I must call him a micromanager, but he's heavily involved. Um, in decision making, and so uh, that will be interesting to see how that dynamic works out with just one OC. Yeah, and I've known very few head coaches, Nick State Saban, maybe with, notwithstanding, that have uh, lacked veto power. I think most of them can uh, step yeah. in and say, uh, you know, no, not in this situation. We want to go this way. But uh, I, I, I think that Sharon Moore is going to bring a lot to the table. He certainly has to the. Uh, to the offensive line play over the last couple of years, and he's had a direct hand in the offense. Uh, but maybe without uh, two guys working on that at once, he may –
be able to put forward his ideas in a yeah. little bit more forceful manner to exactly. Jim Harbaugh and and sell some things. So you know, I'm I'm very interested in seeing what uh, what's going to happen there. Uh, staying on the quarterback topic, uh, how will JJ in your mind be different? because of that TCU game, because of that loss. And I say this in part because I was going back through JJ's interview towards the end of spring ball, and uh, and he talked quite a bit about that TCU loss and yeah. uh, his role in it and how it affected him. And I just uh, I got to thinking about that. Uh, wrote my column in the Wolverine magazine, which is uh, about to come out, about that. What do you think? How is that loss against TCU – going to affect JJ this year? Well, I think, you know, based on observations and, and hearing him talk in front of the media, um, although, you know, we heard him from the media, I re- after always wins, you know, last year, as far as, you know, I didn't go to the, uh, I was, I did not attend the Fiesta Bowl, so I wasn't in that presser and he, you know, he got out of there pretty quick. I'd like to mm-hmm. see him handle that. Uh, hopefully there's not another loss next year anyway, and they go on skate when it won't be tested, but um I, you know, he's going to learn, he's a learner from experience. I think he learned a lot his freshman year that rolled into a lot of precision as a, as a, a second year kid. And I think this year he's going to be even more. And the thing about him, besides his resiliency, he's such a competitor. He's got a lot of Tom Brady in him. I really think that in terms of just willingness or, or, or yearning to win and it bothered him. And, you know, I go back to watching the trophy presentation. That's part that's just part of his therapy and that's part of his solution of how he's going to manage this, this defeat and, and, you know, take that negative and flip it into a positive leverage that negativity, you know, that, that horrible thing he's watching the other team get the trophy and use that as a motivational image, if you will, and use that, you know, probably every day in practice. And so I'm, you know, I, I think it's going to be a plus. I think he's going to learn. I think his, I think the offense is going to open up so he can throw more downfield. And then the RPO, which I've talked about before in key games, when he has to to keep and, and be a downhill runner, you know, you want to keep him upright, but there's going to be those times when that, when that decision is going to have to be made, and I think he's going to embrace that opportunity. Yeah, interesting that you mentioned that. You, you talk about how he reacted uh, with emotions during the press conference. Now, he talked about how he – intends to react emotionally going forward in big games like that. Not only you, you mentioned, you know, he didn't lose a game right up until TCU. Well, he also didn't have a chance in a game where Michigan was, uh, uh, really scrambling the entire game to come back. Certainly they did to an extent against Ohio state, but to, to have that kind of situation where you have to hold your emotions in check you have to have everything together, and uh, and you don't have you're running out of time. He mentioned yeah. the fact that you know one of his first throws goes for six points the other way, yeah. and thinking I just gave the other team six points, and how you have to put that aside. Yeah. And he thinks he's convinced that he will be better in a similar situation next year because of what he went through. And so I think you know in, in both of those situations. Uh, Football wise, the the latter is the one that that he is most concerned about uh, because he's going to, you know, if if Michigan gets to the level of competition again where it's in the playoffs, he could very well be in that situation again. So um, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's like Hank Stram, the old coach of the Chiefs. The 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 biggest word in in football is the word forget, you know, especially if you're a a, a quarterback or a guy in the secondary who gives up a touchdown and JJ McCarthy get those. Those pick six. I mean, think in the game. He had to, he had to, he had to, you know, just kind of regroup him, himself mentally. And he played pretty good in that second half. That's a sign of resiliency. Okay. Mm-hmm. He made mistakes in both halves. But I mean, the, the the pick sixes were were deadly. Let's be real. But I think he's gonna be a better player as he's communicated. He embraces, he doesn't ignore his misfortune. He seems to embrace it. And that's that's a sign of maturity and uh you know, as far he's he's building him up himself up mentally as much as physically. Yeah, no doubt about it. And appreciate the high energy input from Tom Crawford, as always. We'll get back to him in just a minute, but we're going to first uh, give you a word from our sponsor, which uh, 
packs its own energy punch, vitaminenergy.com. Go there and uh, check out their product, uh, Vitamin Energy, fitness, energy, health, all in one convenient shot. Great tasting and energy for seven or more hours with no sugar crash because there is no sugar in it. It's non-GMO. It's kosher certified as well. The Burner Plus Energy and Performance Packed All in One, a thermogenic fat burner. I have tried several and with more to come, I got the thermogenic fat burner going in my own life. Whether you walk in the golf course, keeping the alertness when you're driving, you name it, this is uh, something that can have an impact. You don't want drowsiness there, uh, and you won't have it with vitamin energy. Just use the promo code WolverineBogo, B-O-G-O, at vitaminenergy.com. It's easy. Go to vitaminenergy.com, add an item to your cart and get an item of equal or lesser value absolutely free. Give it a try, give it a shot, shake it and take it, vitaminenergy.com. And again, that promo code, Wolverine Bogo. And now we're going back to the high energy Tom Crawford and uh, talking some more football, but we're going to move to the other side of the ball now as uh, I had a an extended conversation recently with one Mason Graham who was one heck of a yeah. m impressive Michigan freshman defensive tackle a year ago for a freshman you know you see the you see the receivers contribute you'll see the occasional running back as a freshman come through and some defensive backs you don't see many defensive tackles slugging it out with guys that are 20 and 21 years old and 300 pounders on the offensive lines in the Big Ten, the way that Mason Graham did. And uh, he says, you know, he is uh, uh, very convinced that Michigan is going to have more push from its interior defensive line this year, not just from those edge guys. Uh, Tom Crawford, your thoughts about that claim and uh, how you think that might work out? Well, I mean, I have faith in Mike Elson. I mean, is this is this Mike Elson? This is his second year, right? Coming up, he's had yes. one year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, you know, I think back to what my and he's a former Wolverine. I remember him playing linebacker in the in the early nineties. Uh, a terrific player. Um, the the strength of Notre Dame's defense when he was there and I, I'm trying to think how many years, maybe several years, but I mean, in the last five years, that defensive line was the strength of, of their team. And, and that's Mike Elston. And he, he turned that D line into where um, one that could generate a pass rush and which everybody wants pass rush. Right. And uh, Michigan wanted it. We all wanted a pass rush when that, in that TCU game uh, when Matt, Max Duggan got, you know, kind of got into a flow here and there and, uh, and generate sacks. And so, um, I, I have a lot of faith in Mike Elson. I, you know, when you look at the, you know, I, when I think of D lines and I hate to bring up Ohio state, but when Larry, Larry Johnson used to be the D line coach at Penn state, when he came over to Ohio state, I mean, his whole creed was we got, we got to have eight guys. We have to have eight guys that can, you know, that are, that are like the four stars and Michigan has that now. I mean, they are talking about the offensive line being deep and that D line is going to have a lot of fresh guys. And, and I think when, fatigue comes into play or doesn't come into play is it, 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 it's dictated by how much, you know, how many guys you can rotate in there, but you, you know, in certain games. And so I think with between the depth and between, I have a lot of faith in Mike Elson, he's getting some he's doing, you know, getting some great athletes there that uh, it's, it's a position of strength. And as we know, you want that pressure up the middle where Tom Brady doesn't like the pressure up the middle. No quarterback likes the pressure up the middle. And if they could, do that uh, they're going to be dynamic uh, as a defense yeah and I would agree with you not only uh, do you have great coaching in Mike Elston you've got a, uh, a senior like Chris Jenkins who oh, yeah. is I love that in, kid. an increasing yeah. beast up there uh, and I think he's going to lead the way and do a lot of things but you you look at it you had Mason Graham last year who was just a freshman and still was yeah. able to be strong enough to hold his own. You know, he's going to make all these gains in the, in the off season in terms of the weight program. He's already making them. I mean, he came in uh, bench pressing 22, 225 pounds. The, the norm for reps on, uh, on the bench 
doing it 21, 22 times. He's already up to 28, yeah. which is uh, is really eye-opening. Yeah. He is going to get that much better. You look at a Kenneth Grant, 6'3", 356 pounds, <laughs> who uh, another freshman that learned a whole lot last year. I just think that uh, they've got – Mike Elston's got a whole lot to work with in this defensive line, and I think that uh, you're going to see a situation where – uh, they are very, very good and increase not just they, – they've got the guys off the edges. They, they've got it rolling there. They're just going to plug and chug with uh, with the edge guys. But I think you'll see more up the middle. And uh, I, I'm, I'm anxious to see to what extent they get that done, especially against the best teams that they face. Well, speaking uh, of the best teams, and that's what, you know, what with Jalen Carter at, at, at Georgia and, and you watch Alabama over the years, they always have a, a monster at the three tech in the middle, that nose guard. They get in the middle of the line. They got people who can disrupt. And I think, and hopefully, Michigan can have some disruptors in that D line way more than they ever have. Yeah. And I, I'm anxious to see it. I, I, Great point about uh, you know when you when you have those great great teams you have great athletes uh, yeah. in all the way through the lineup and that includes the middle of the defensive line. Um, Jesse Minter is yeah. uh, going to be here for a second year. That's yeah. big in itself. But what he learned last year, what he learned in that again, we get back to TCU. There were some <laughs> times there where it. It looked like, um, oh, God. you know, they, they were trying to press so hard that they got burned on it. And I get it. I mean, it, it's um, that was that was a little bit of flashback to maybe Don Brown trying to bring pressure at times where two people took advantage of it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just I want to see how they react in those situations this year when they get that level of uh offensive attack against them where they go what do you think that uh, Jesse Minter if you were uh, sitting down with him Tom Crawford as the uh, as the defensive coordinator whisperer what what might you uh, <laughs> yeah. alter or tweak yeah. yeah me a DC whisper right <laughs> but um, um what I, this this is what I would ask okay in 2023 because Michigan's defensive line, apply, you know, get the quarterback pressures that everybody wants the pressures, obviously the sack, but the pressures without blitzing. Because I go back to, uh, what was it, around the 13-minute mark, Michigan was only down three to TCU, 41-38, I believe it was. I can still remember that vividly. Um, and uh, third down, and I, I'm trying to think of who who actually was thrown in there on the blitz, but uh, was it DJ Turner's out there on an island and Quentin Johnson goes 76 yards. Is that, mm -hmm. that, that what I'm trying to vividly or horrifically yeah. recall? Yeah, and all well. of a sudden, it's, and in other, in other words, Michigan's got the ball ready to go ahead. Instead, they're down 10. And the momentum shifted the other way. So my question for Jesse Mentor, do you have, or can you scheme and can do you have the personnel uh, with a four-man rush or whatever you do scheme-wise where you don't have to put, you know, certain players in, in vulnerable situations out in the flat where you can get burned by a long, a long touchdown, where there's not – where there's less risk and it's just part of the of, of the four-man front that you can get those quarterback pressures with the edge rusher talent that Michigan has and then all that interior D-line that we've just been talking about the last few minutes. Exactly. Can he yep. do that? That's mm -hmm. And then now he's in his second year. We have continuity. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's you, we just nailed the biggest question of the whole thing is because I think it's defense. I mean, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. What's the biggest issue. And I, what's the biggest anxiety it's defense. Cause I want to see Michigan deliver defensively in big games against big talented teams from the South with another level of speed. That's what I want to see. Yeah, and uh, it, it gets right back to can they get pressure up the middle to uh, complement those as edge rushers and uh, and do it with four guys. You know, I, I thought as we were talking about that, we mentioned three interior guys. Here's a fourth to keep an eye on for, uh, for Michigan fans who haven't seen a whole lot of this guy, but a junior out of Detroit, Rayshon Benny. Yeah, I keep hearing a lot about him and how he has come along. That I, I told by multiple people, keep an eye on Rayshon Benny. 
and uh, we will do exactly that. Uh, before we uh, leave talking about the defense, uh, Tom Crawford, who would you say at this point would be your projected MVP on the defensive side of the football? <laughs> we, I mean, I'm not asking the offense because I'm I'm kind of figuring that uh, it, it'll yeah. be J.J. with, with all yeah, the he's other gonna things. Heisman, he's going to probably be the MVP, right? <laughs> Good chance at it. Oh, God, this is a hard one. You know, I'm, I'm tempted to go with Mason Graham for all the reasons you cited, but um, I think it's going to be at the at the third level. I think it's a Rod Moore or a Will Johnson for some reason. I, I, because I think that that level is going to be a difference maker in the team, and I think that that – and Will Johnson is the next Charles Woodson, not to put too much pressure on number two there, but mm -hmm. um, uh, Deion's kid. Uh, so it's one of those two. So I, let me go with Will Johnson. Because uh, okay. I think he's going to have more at, at corner. He's going to have more opportunity to shine in big games, uh, maybe you know, than Rod Moore at, at safety. Yep, and I'm going to uh, differ from that a little bit, just because there's a guy that has had a couple years now under his belt, extremely talented. He's going to be right in the middle of the action all the time, and that would be linebacker Junior Colson. Yeah. And I'm cool. just saying, with the line he's got in front of him. With the defensive backs he's got behind him, he's going to be free to roam and really make some plays. And I think it's it's going to be uh, Junior Colson's moment to really shine on this defense. There's going to be a lot of guys that uh, play as a team and contribute uh, heavily to this defense. But uh, we named, just named two of them that have to be front and center for Michigan to accomplish a lot of the things that they want to do on defense. All right, uh, let's let's shift gears here for a moment because we want to and need to talk some basketball. Uh, we, we have, well, we have to talk about this one. Uh, breaking news in that uh, Papa Kente that uh, is maybe certainly Juwan Howard's biggest supposedly incoming recruit yeah. is now not necessarily incoming he has been released from his nli and uh he is looking around your reaction tom crawford to this latest development for the basketball wolverines well i mean it's like it's like i talked about earlier i mean my, my you know every day brings a new saga a new, a new chapter in this whole thing of what's going to be michigan's 13 scholarship kids and and you know what? To be honest with you, the, the Hunter Dickinson thing uh, bothers me more than anything because, you know, we hear, oh, he might come back. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm in the school of, you know, and listen, if you're going to leave, you're gone. You know, it's like that's like saying um, a guy's married. You know, I'm uh, let's get divorced. But, you know, I might change my mind a couple of weeks, so I might come back. You know what I mean? So if Hunter, if you're leaving, you're you know, if you're going to leave, you're gone. We're not taking you back. So maybe that would uncloud, if you will, um, you know, maybe there, maybe there's I, I don't I'm not saying that that's what would pop or that cause that that um, or, or bringing the kid in from um, Tennessee or some of these other all the all the uncertainty if that has anything to do. With, I mean, this is number six player in the country, a center, number six center, number six center in the country. Pop is number three player out of Connecticut. I mean, he's got a lot of accolades. This is the top recruit that Michigan had. Well, there's only two. Uh, George Washington, the third being the other. So um, I don't know. It just adds to the drama. And it's like, you know, it it, it's, it's, it it just gives you this, like, what what's happening with this basketball team personnel wise? And, and is it or is it, you know, what, what were the reasons he left? I mean, or he's not coming. Is it is it uh, because he doesn't want competition coming in that might be perceived coming in the portal? Or is it this academic barrier? which seemingly um, with Terrence Shannon Jr. all of a sudden shut the door at the end. He goes up to Illinois because Michigan has, what, higher standards? Is that, you know, and the same thing with Xavier Worley in, in football a couple of years ago. And he, all of a sudden he's off to Texas, which is supposed to be a reputable Texas, uh, as, is a reputable academic school. So is Michigan too stringent? And is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know, but we don't know. So all we have to do is guess. But it's just it's just another uh, just another variable of uncertainty for Juwan Howard's basketball team. A lot to chew on there. I will push back a little bit about the notion that if uh, if Hunter Dickinson suddenly says, 
you know, I have looked around and I want to be back with Michigan for another year. I don't think that you look the, uh, the potentially the best center in the Big Ten in the eye and say, nope, get on down the road. And I, you know, I get it. I get the feeling, but I know the way things have changed in, uh, in college basketball, you've got kids looking around. Uh, and if, you know, if, if you, if you take that hard of a stance, I, I don't know where you're going to go in the future because it, it's opened up. These guys can look around, these guys can go. And I mean, you've said yourself that you kind of have to re-recruit your own team. You have to put your team together every year. So, you know, I, I, I wonder about that one. Well, I mean, it, so it's, it's, you know, with, with Hunter, but now let's, let's move over to the Hunter situation. You know, and, and I heard Ballas, you know, I, and everybody's talking about, oh, Kansas is in the forefront. You know, they're going to be the, they're, they're, that's the team because they have the biggest NIL package. They want him for some reason. I guess, I don't think they wanted him initially. I mean, when he was coming out of Hyattsville to Mantha, but all of a sudden they want him. Okay. So we're hearing like over a million dollars in an NIL. I mean, I'm watching, I'm, I start watching the NBA in the playoffs. And I was watching the NBA this weekend. There's no freaking way Hunter Dickinson is going to fit into that level of play, in my opinion. Mm. He's going to have to play in Europe. He's not good enough to play at that level. So I think what he's doing is grabbing all much money as he possibly can at the NIL level, and then and then you know have a nice career in Europe and and you know be a happy camper, make a lot of money, and and you know God bless him. I mean that that's a great life and what a tremendous experience. But um, it, I, I just hate, I mean, I just, it, the fact that you're kind of out there waffling around, at, you know, it, it's self-centered. You, you know, it, it's not, it's all about you, Hunter. How about your team that you've played for the last three years? Why don't you give them some level of what you're going to do or not? Are you, are you, are you still thinking about coming back or wherever that's coming from? I don't know. Rumblings. We always use the word rumblings. I don't know what the rumblings are, but I would move on from him and, and, and 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 try to figure out what other pieces of the puzzle you can get from the portal and 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 patch this team together yeah well it's going to be uh a situation where it's going to be very tough i would say at this late date to uh to get additional big man help um i mean you, you know you look at it and uh i i've got so many thoughts about this one is a bigger picture thought your your program should not be in a state right now where a hunter dickinson even thinks about going somewhere else after he's worn that uniform for three yeah. years and yeah. he has been so embraced as he has your yeah. nil package should be rock solid to the point that okay why would i go anywhere else and your team your program should be at a point where Man, I'm looking at uh, a big a Big Ten championship and a long run in the NCAA's. Why would I need to go somewhere else? But in in Hunter's third year, you got a program that missed the NCAA's. So I just you know I I kind of understand with the ability to look around, but boy that that says some things that you need to to get fixed. And well, John, I have a question for you. You know, sure. about, I mean, because I heard this thing. Uh, he, he, I think, I, I swear he got it. He said it, you know, at one, in a tweet or something around the pod, he had no choice. He had no choice. He had no choice to leave. Well, expound on that a little bit, if you will. What do you mean you had no choice? You had no choice because you're concerned that you don't have any support and no one's, these, this current team's not going to get you the ball or you have no choice because they don't want me. I mean, you know, don't throw that nugget out there. And then, you know, I, you know, oh, yeah, oh, a follow up. This is what drives me nuts about this kid, you know, and um, watch I'm saying all this and he'll come back, you know, <laughs> but, um, and we'll see how that goes. But I don't know. I mean, this this whole portal thing has been really difficult for Juwan Howard. I mean, I, I go back to Jalen Llewellyn, um, grab, you know all of a sudden bringing this kid in from Princeton and I'm, all of a sudden Frankie Collins, I don't like this. And he's gone. And all of a sudden that's, what's going to, that, that there's, there's the example of what happens when you go to the portal uh, that you're, you got to re-recruit your current guys. I mean, I know college coaches right now that are out recruiting and they're, they're, you're out recruiting 24 and 25 kids right now, but they're also on the phone 
with all their all their staff people back. Is, is so and so happy? Is he coming? You know, after the spring ball, is he is he coming back? You know, is he happy? I mean, it's like you got to you got you got to worry about what's going on at home, and you got to go out and get new players. I mean, I these college coaches, uh, good lord, what a wicked business you're in these days. Oh, there's no question about it, and it. Again, we go right back to uh, to John Beeline and why yeah. he left Michigan. One of the big yeah. reasons, obviously, yeah. was because you are in this free agency world and you're you're changing rosters all the time. And you you talk about uh, Ponte Papa Conte uh, yeah. and the fact that it appears now he will never step on the floor for the Michigan Wolverines. And and you think about this. Okay, who will who will wind up uh, giving Michigan basketball more over the course of their career? If you'd have asked this six months ago, you say uh, uh, Papa Conte, yeah. uh, Austin Davis, or Jordan Morgan, yeah. and both of those latter two guys gave infinitely more than yes. Papa Conte will yeah. because you're in the era where you can just you can go and you can. Uh, make these fast decisions and go somewhere else, and uh, you know it. It you start to think, man, do you take a just a slightly lesser level guy? You don't take the number six center in the country. Maybe you take the number twenty center, and he's around three or four years. I, I, I because no. you know they're going to be gone after a year, even if they're really, really good. John, I don't remember what football game it was, um, but it was the day that Papa Conte committed uh, at foot at a football game last fall. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. I remember, and I don't know who I was talking—a variety of person. Oh, this is a great get, and I—I I remember I looked out. I go, when he shows up, then we'll talk about. It. You know what I mean? Because you, I, I don't. I, that's why I don't get in this recruiting stuff. I know it's yeah. big for the site and everything, Wolverine.com and on three and all these sites and people are interested. And I'm all about this 24 class in football. But, you know, I'm, I, I reserve my, you know, exuberance, if you will, until I see who's at media day in a Michigan uniform and we're being introduced to them and talking to them the first time. Then, in my mind, they're officially a member of the team. Not until then. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And I know a lot of people, Folks out there listening in are feeling just like uh, Jason Parkinson, who is weighing in with comments about, uh, you know, something is not right. Why these guys are just walking away. And, you know, that's something that Juwan Howard is going to have to deal with. He's he's already uh, making efforts to uh, ameliorate some of the losses by bringing in shooters and and all that. But, boy, big guys. Uh, are, are very, very important. Michigan had a freshman uh, this year who contributed uh, significantly, but, I mean, he's going to be the guy next yeah. year. So uh, yeah. we're uh, free throw practice at six. Hey, Terrace Reed's going to have to learn how to hold on to the basketball down in the block, you know what I mean, at, and, and, and finish. And, yeah. and I, you, know, you know, basketball players are made in the summer. We know that. Uh, and he has an incredible opportunity to, to flourish, it's, you know. And so, I, and he seems like a nice young man. So I'm hoping it works out for him. But boy, there's a lot, of, a lot of pressure on him uh, to deliver. That's for sure. No doubt, there's pressure on Tom Crawford to deliver, and he does it every single <laughs> week. It's been a fantastic no uh, and fast 45 minutes yeah. on the Wolverine Live. Uh, check us out again next week, and don't forget to. Uh, Go to vitaminenergy.com. Use that uh, code Wolverine Bogo. Uh, get yourself some vitamin energy and join us again next week because I guarantee you <laughs> there will be uh, other shoes that have dropped and we'll have plenty to talk about on the Wolverine Live. Tom Crawford, thanks for being with us. Oh, it was a pleasure, JB. Look forward to next week.